And welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some Ezreal Kindred to start the day off. We are going to be trying a brand new combo here in Legends of Runeterra with the newest expansion that you have probably seen. We haven't played it yet. We are going to be playing it for the first time. Our combo is going to be with concurrent timelines, one mana slow speed for the rest of the game. The first time you play a follower each round, you pick one of three followers with the same cost to transform it into. Okay, so it only it's only the first time you play a follower each round. But basically, when you when you play that follower, then you um, look at three other followers and, and you just get that the you know the other follower instead of it. Um, and the the whole reason to to play like well, one that sounds really fun. That's a good reason to play it. But two, the main reason why we are playing it is because of Commander Ledros. Now, if we look at all the regions in the game, there are only. I guess I should probably. Whoops. How do we do this? Filter by followers, units. There we go. That'll work. If we look at all of the, you know, Commander Ledros costs nine mana. In the game, there are. Uh, can I scroll this up just a little bit? There we go. There are six cards, six followers that cost nine mana. One of them, of course, is Ledros. And so with concurrent timelines, we cannot get Ledros. We, so we get three random ones of the other five. Now, the one that's really important right here is the Dreadway. Because the Dreadway plus Ledros together is a one-shot kill. Ledros has this skill that deals damage to the enemy nexus equal to half its health. And you round up. But then Dreadway has the passive ability that just doubles all damage dealt by your skills. So when you deal half, but it gets doubled, that's, you know, a hole that does all of the damage, whatever their health is. It doesn't matter what their health is. It kills them immediately. So with only five options to choose from, and we get to see three of the five, that means we have a 60% chance for whenever we play Ledros to just immediately kill our opponent by turning it into the Dreadway. Pretty awesome combo there. And even, like, worst case... Like, even if we don't hit Dreadway, we're probably going to hit Bright Steel Formation, which is the other, you know, Bright Steel Formation is also amazing. So if we don't hit Dreadway, we probably hit that. The only way this can really go bad for us is if we hit Kadrigrin, Mina, and Karina, Veraza. Those are our three. Um, then, you know, that's that's sad. But besides that, like, if we hit Dreadway, they just die immediately. And then Bright Steel Formation is just a great attacker, and so that's a cool card too. So that's our combo. Besides that... Back to the rest of our deck, we're going to be an Ezreal Kindred control deck where we're going to be um, trying to slay a whole lot of their units and target a lot of their enemies with leveling up Ezreal. So we're going to have things like Thermogenic Beam, Vile Feast, Mystic Shots, Gotcha, a bunch of Static Shocks because these each count as two targets for Ezreal. And the metagame's really aggressive with a lot of people attacking with small units, so Static Shock can be a two for one. Um, Kempunk Shutter doesn't count for Ezreal, but whenever we play it, it deals one to all enemies, so that's going to be important for keeping keeping down these small aggro decks. We got a Grass of the Undying, a Withering Whale, a couple of Vengeance, and a Ruin Nation. So lots of ways to be killing stuff. Um, and so hopefully we're killing a lot of small things too. Now we're going to struggle killing the real big stuff, but that's where Kindred comes into play. Because Kindred says the first time you slay a unit each round, you mark Kindred marks the weakest enemy. So if we're slaying the weak enemies, Kindred will still... Sl mark the weakest thing that's left, which may be uh, something big, and then Round End Kindred will kill that. Um, let's see. So that's kind of about it. We got some other uh, cards that do really well with concurrent timelines. We have some um, ways to kind of cycle through our deck and discard extra concurrent timelines that we don't need anymore, or just whatever else we don't need. So like some treasure. Um, so having like play abilities is really important because we have some treasures on Night Urchin. We play them. Um, and then they just turn into a different, you know, like this will turn into a different one drop or jump, some treasure will turn into a different three drop. We got like Chump Wump to be able to make some mushroom clouds and then turn into something else. Uh, we already talked about the Shredder. Um, but then we also got this spicy one. We got two copies here of Evershade Stalker, which if we have Nightfall turned on and then play Evershade Stalker, it will come in and, um, you know, like it, will, it will enter. And with concurrent timelines, we just turn it into something else. And then it will come back to our hand, and so then we'll have an addition, you know, so we'll have Evershade Stalkers to be able to do that later. So we can get, get kind of like having infinite uh, two drops with those. So that sounds pretty cool. All right, but let's get to it. Let's get to some games. We're going to play five games in ranked. Y'all know that's how we always do. And let's see how we do here with our first deck today. 
Ezreal Kindred. Looks like we got some Ephemerals to start off with. Okay, so we're going to mulligan. We don't need two copies of Concurrent Timeline, so let's go ahead and mulligan one, and we'll keep the rest. Now, maybe I should have just kept the one, kept that extra one because of Sump Treasure. And honestly, I'm kind of thinking that maybe I should have just done that, like with Sump Treasure in hand. I guess I just, it was very instinctual to just mulligan the second copy because the second copy doesn't do anything, right? So it was, that was like my instincts was just immediately mulligan, but I probably should have just kept it in hand and then discarded it. That's too bad. So I kind of want to use the thermogenic beam because it's slow speed. And everything. Instead of the mystic shot. Yeah. But then again, thermogenic beam does kill Hecarim. Hecarim's kind of a problem. So, okay. So final answer, I'm just going to pass. If I'm going to mystic shot that thing, I might as well just wait to mystic shot it. Because, yeah, Hecarim, super, super scary. We had to be able to kill that. When I'm summoned, grant me plus one, plus one if you predicted this game. We have not. Um, we will not get the Nightfall there. So just take the 3-3, three, three, I guess. So I'm going to keep the Static Shock that will draw a card. Yeah, I have a feeling that we're going to be uh, getting a lot smaller unit with... Um, with that 4-3. That some Treasure is a pretty big 3 drop. I feel like we're going to end up getting a smaller one most, most of the time. Well, that's really bad for us. They had two of those. That's really bad for us. They had two of them. Man, that's... Yeah, that's bad. Um, I guess we just take the 5-5. Five five. Yeah, so we, we can kill them on turn 9 if we can survive until turn 9. We'll be able to kill them. Definitely would like something to discard stuff. Oh no, Black Spear? That card's great. Perfect. Um, these aren't good. Yeah, like these are these are all a lot worse than the four three. I guess the Green Fang Warden. No, I don't need another Ledros. It is time. Tell the people what you have seen today. Yeah, see, I, just, I don't know if we're going to be able to survive till turn 9. Probably not. So Static Shock will take out the Sharks. Destiny calls. Out. 
Playing around Static Shock perfectly. But it also makes sense to attack with the largest things, I guess. What brings you here? So that's going to be three, four, five. So we're going to make this a two, four, two, four. Can't really stay alive unless I block that. I take 12. So yeah, I, I cannot stay alive. I yeah, I can't stay alive. Harrowing pretty good. GG's. Having two of those those two three the two two mana two threes was gross. Okay, Lissandra Trundle. Definitely do not need Static Shock in this matchup, and that was a card that I, I wish I would have discarded Static Shock, but you know I didn't know that they're going to have two of the two mana two threes to buff up their stuff. So keeping the Static Shock uh, definitely backfired, and we'll just keep Vengeance and Ruination. Yeah, Soul, Sh Soul Shepherd, that card was awesome. Don't blink, or you miss me. And I don't have to worry too much about Ezreal staying alive because we have the backup Ezreal. Can be useful. I like them having this, the spiderling in play. I don't really want to kill the spiderling. Um, you know, it just takes up one of their spots on the board. I'm happy with that. So if I cast Mystic Shots, yeah, I do it. I was going to say I won't have Vengeance available, but I will have Thermogenic Beam available. Sure. Um, they could have protection from Thermogenic Beam. Because I, you can definitely assume they're going to have their five drops, right? So like both their five drops are pretty good. Hopefully they don't have Troll Chant 2, though. I guess they do because they're emoting. Yeah, I saw your emote the first time. No, they're playing Trundle, not Elise. This is going to be four. Firing. Um, yeah, looks, looks like turning off emotes works. So I need 
I need to just draw concurrent timelines, and then in two turns we win the game. Basically. They could have vengeance, though, to, to stop me from winning the game in two turns. We've done a really good job cycling. We've drawn all three Sump Treasures. There it is. Alright, they still... They haven't, like, tapped out or anything. I don't know if there's really a reason for me to go for it. I want them to spend some mana. I'm not sure if they're going to. Doesn't look like it. What if I just play Ledros normally? Maybe the thing to do is just play Ledros normally. They probably are going to have to kill my Ledros. A chill in the air. Okay, so their plan is just to block Ledros with a 3 1. Got a vengeance out of their hand. So they did have the vengeance. I want to go to two. Maybe not, because of atrocity. Maybe not. So they just played one Vengeance, they have to have another Vengeance in hand. Or, I guess, Atrocity. Atrocity will work now, because they'll get the 8-8. Eight, eight. And they could... No? Would Atrocity work? Alright. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm trying to think of just all like the different iterations of everything that can happen. I'm sorry that I'm, I'm being so wish-washy. So 
So do they have another vengeance or atrocity? They have an entomb. That will work. That will keep them alive for a little bit. That is a vengeance. <laughs> Concurrent timeline should be burst. Not looking too good for them. Alright, they're still alive. We drew another sump treasure? I thought we already had three. I guess we I guess we didn't. Maybe that was last game. Alright, there we go. Good job, Ezreal. So we didn't get like the one shot kill, but um, you know, everything still worked out. Alright, prediction. Ooh. Overwhelm. Okay, I think I'm just going to keep this hand. We'll just keep this hand. I'm sorry. I was sorry for taking a while. I'm trying to do the prediction thing um, in Twitch chat. I know. I should put the doggos to work. They should do it. They're just laying back there. Preservarium. I don't know if this is like really a vile feast matchup or not. Don't blink or you miss me. Does kind of keep them from, you know, putting more stuff on the board with me playing this Ezreal. If they play anything, I get to Mystic Shot it for free. Okay, so they waste one mana and a turn of putting stuff into play. Oh, would you look at this place? Anything else? <laughs> Too close to this. Watch me. This can be a really good trade for us if we get, you know, get a two for one. Hopefully we can. Hopefully that's it. All right, good. So there's a three for two. Um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not casting you, Overshade Stalker. <laughs> Sorry, I know you'll just come back to my hand, but I'm not casting you. Okay. Ooh, not a bad draw. One shot, I'll skip. Not a bad draw. <laughs> Just considering like attacking, you know, like with like one ones, we get the free mystic shot on that. Sun's beneath me and winds behind me. Do I want to spend two mana on a gotcha on anything? Man, they really, really like these rock hoppers. I don't know, just Sejuani Reddington are just much more scary than... Like, I don't think I'm losing to a 2-3 or a 3-1, right? So it's like, why why use a gotcha on them? Like, I don't think I'm losing to either of those cards. Tombs, towns, and everything in I can lose to that card. That's a card I can lose to. After them. 
That spell shield is real strong. I turn it like so. Yeah, that spell shield's real strong. Ooh. Be a spicy kindred. Because I could, if I, I have to have kind, kindred has to be in play whenever it sees me slay a unit. But if I can have kindred in play, slay like the pirate, this cr cr chronomancer, then we can mark the ruin raider. Now we, they probably play something else. So it probably doesn't work out that well for me. But you never know. Alright, we're going to be able to slay one of these. So there we go. Use our removal spells to kill small stuff. Kindred kills big stuff. That's a good Kindred right there. Just gets through the spell shield. No worries. Ooh, I like how the Shredder can destroy a spell shield too. No, go ahead. Challenge my chump bump. Maybe they play something with one health when we get to shredder it. Whoa. Whoa. Easy there. Dang. Down to four. Battle Fury Ruin Runner. That is... That is real. Oh, come on, really? They did have one health thing to play? And they played around Kempunk Shredder perfectly. Cool. What do you make of that? I'm not sure. One shot, all skill. The problem, like if I if I play Shredder here, it kills this, so it marks the three three. It doesn't mark the fourteen four. We do not linger. Keep your distance. Oh, take that's not tamper proof. That's gotta hurt. Yeah, I mean that's that's the better block. So Kindred is kind of different because now you know, like so Kindred levels up. Now Kindred can still um, it can mark something again. I don't want to meet whatever woke you up. So now now leveled up Kindred, it's like it's like a new new card. So we can. All right, so we'll mark the Renekton and kill that. So they get to keep their 14-3 alive, but as you know, I have Vengeance. Yeah, definitely morning tea time. That'll do. So we really got to show off the power of Kindred there, that game. of Just Kindred, just, you know, use our removal spells on the small stuff, have Kindred kill the big stuff. Like, Kindred killing that Ruin Raider with the spell shield was incredible and, and uh, got that one. Ooh, Jarvan Shen. Okay, this is interesting. We haven't really played against Jarvan yet, so this is interesting that we get to play against some Jarvan. 
Okay, we got our concurrent timelines. We're gonna keep everything in hand. We'll keep our champion and a couple of good removal spells. We don't really need to just cast concurrent timelines immediately when it doesn't do anything, because maybe I need that extra mana for Thermogenic Beam. Water changes, but never breaks. Um... Hmm. The world's a big place. Let's see all of it. Okay, so good news there. So sharp sights, you know, it's so like that sharp sight was gonna be able to block the Ezreal. And honestly, maybe I should have just mulliganed Ezreal because of sharp sight. Um you know, sharp like if they have a second sharp sight here, like sharp sight is a real problem. Watch and, learn. and so maybe Ezreal's just not very good because of sharp sight. Yeah, like that that card's a real problem. Pull them down. A gift from the river folk. That card is a real problem. Well, this looks pretty bad for me. But I, can't, I can't let them just keep drawing more spells. River Shaper is awesome. <laughs> like, look at how many cards they have compared to me. Oh, that River Shaper was brutal. Alright, let's play the Shredder. And what, a 7-3, a 4-4, four, four, and a 2-5? I guess the 7-3. All right, thank you, Morning Tea Time. I've got your back. River shape the land and give it life. Never want. That's rough. Man, their <laughs> their cards looked great. Strike hard. What form will the waters take? Oh, it doesn't get... Oh, Kindred has to be in play for it to die at the end of turn, right. Yeah. Right. Okay, well, that was terrible. <laughs> okay, so a couple of things learned. Don't keep Ezreal in a, in a sharp sight matchup. Just don't do it. You're right. Like, we need, we need like, uh, spells to interact. Also, don't keep concurrent timelines. That was not worth keeping either. Um, that kind of matchup, we got to be able to interact. Like, like those... They don't have a ton of threats, but they have a lot of protection and stuff you got to be able to interact. So concurrent timelines, Ezreal, both of those should have been mulliganed and looked for, you know, cards that would either, you know, better attack or block or removal spells or anything like that. So that's what we really learned with that game. Those are those two cards need to go. Karma Zoe. I like our chances here against Karma Zoe, but we'll have to see. I don't know if they're going to have too many... Um, too many good responses for the concurrent timelines. And I'm going to just keep all of these. All right, so we found another concurrent timeline, so we don't need to keep that one. I thought you'd never ask. And good thing I saved my spell mana. Sounds dangerous. I'm in. For this free Mystic Shot. Boo. Never mind. No 
Basically, I, the reason why I didn't play concurrent timelines yet is because I don't... I, I kind of want some treasure over whatever we're going to get with the timelines. Like, I want this 4-3. So I'm probably going to mulligan the Static Shock. The Static Shock's really there to kill Zoe. But I have Mystic Shot for that now. Okay, now we definitely want that with the Evershade Stalker. Okay, sorry. I forgot the prediction while we're doing the other stuff. So the prediction should be up now. Okay. So they do play Zoe. So my options, you know, so I can go Kindred and then try to Mystic Shot Zoe. Um, or just play this Evershade Stalker. And I think I'm just going to play this Evershade Stalker. And get a free two drop. Let's take the Green Glade Duo. Free two drops are pretty good. Free two drop. So the concurrent timelines only affects the first one, but this is going to be two mana I'm going to waste anyway. Yeah, so concurrent timelines is only the first one. So that's that's how they balance the card. They were like, oh well this isn't gonna work with Evershade Stalker, so let's let's make it just the first one. So if you play some other unit first before the nightfall for your Evershade Stalker, then your Evershade Stalker won't be able to uh, make one, because it's just the first follower. River shape the land and give it life. Yeah, so many river shapers everywhere. Alright, Kindred, help us clear stuff up, and that's why I wanted to, I want to save removal spells for uh, Kindred being in play. Let's try to kill... Um... Right, so I'm going to target the Zoe because, like, Pil you know, like, otherwise Pale Cascade can save any of the other things. So, like, they have to have something besides Pale Cascade, you know, like, some Blessed Figure or whatever. <laughs> like, deny. But, of course, attacking here does mark the River Shaper, which does tell them they get to just get a free attack in with the River Shaper. So, that's not great for me. Because, yeah, they get the free attacks, they get to draw a spell. But then their card dies. A little worried about Hush. When I target the River Shaper with Thermo, because then it would have been the same thing, right? So like if I if I kill River Shaper with Thermo, then their Zoe gets a mark, and so then their Zoe gets to strike us, and then they create the super cool star chart, right? So like I'm I'm kind of stuck with either allowing them to draw a spell or create a super cool star chart, and I feel like a like this super cool star chart's maybe more powerful than the spell, but maybe not again. So this will level up Kindred, if this just happens. Because that gets the mark, then we slay it. So we slayed something with the mark. So Kindred leveled up. And I can block that with Green Glade Duo. Okay. I was thinking maybe they'd play something else again and, you know, get the two mana and then, you know, go from there. It's 
is somewhat annoying, but I mean, I don't think my life total is under that much duress. Uh, yeah, I mean, can I get a spray fin? Swole Squirrel sounds pretty cool. I don't think... Yeah, because see, you summon... See, we summon the other thing. We don't get the summon the spray fin. I didn't think so, so we don't get to attune and draw a card. Because whatever you play is the thing that gets summoned, but then it gets transformed into something else. But I still like the spray fin just being elusive. All right, like being elusive is good. And now we will keep the Sump Treacher. Ooh, they got rid of Hush. Hush was the worst card in their hand. Interesting. So yeah, we get to gotcha the small thing, so they can't like use whatever spell to save it. And then we'll mark the 7-3. So bye-bye 7-3. So we don't have to worry about, you know, Pell Cascade, Sun Bless Vigor, that kind of stuff. Um. Alright. <laughs> it's the thing that attacks for the most. I could replace the spray fin with another Evershade Stalker if we want. Four, five. So 4, 6, 9, 11. Could be me, like, attacking for 11. Remember, all they have to do is play a spell, and then this Mountain Goat will turn into a 4, 3. Okay, so that's the third hush. So while they do kill um, my kindred, which is sad, we still have a decent amount of stuff in play. And... If we ever draw Ledros, like, they die immediately, right? Like, if we draw Ledros. Hmm. Alright, so two denies and three hush gone. All right, all three denies. <laughs> three deny, three hush. All gone. Ours is the will of Ionia. You'll see me, yes? All uh, right, that heals twice. I should have blocked with the Sum Treasure. I guess Green Glade Lookout. I mean, this. I guess this thing attacks for three. Yuck. Yeah, Karma may win this. I just all I need to do is draw Ledros, and the game's over. They've already used all three denies, so it's. Probably over if we just draw. And they've used all three hushes where hush could hush, you know, they could hush a dreadway. We swing within the flows of magic. Crack their bones, see what's inside. The spirit gives to those who listen. They'll never see us coming. Currents, pull 
hold them down. Yeah, they could have Moonlight Affliction. Think they're gonna Moonlight Affliction the Dreadway. That's them taking 11. Has its cost. They've played two Pale Cascade so far. I want to do this right now before they draw the spell from River Shaper. It just makes it you know more likely that we were able to kill the Karma. Ooh, that's big. What form will the waters take? Waters still. That is pretty nice. What is gained when we return malevolence? Ledros, where you at? Reality is just your mind crumbling under what it doesn't understand, silly. Yeah, silly. Where's Ezreal at? Three out of six? Okay, I'll do this then. Because, you know, we could do, like, one damage upstairs instead of killing the Zoe whenever I have these other elusives, but... Okay, well, that's not going to kill either. Ooh, Neverglade Collector. Neverglade Collector is a spicy one. Get some draining in. You want you want to attack with your immortal fire? Go ahead. Get some draining in. I, okay, I didn't actually really mean that. <laughs> uh, spray fin. That's a spicy one. Neverglade. Neverglade ruination does not work. Oh, I should have blocked with the three one vile feast. So they are at three. What if I just attack like this? Oh, that's true. Evershade Stalker last turn would have drained one with for the Neverglade. I can still do that at the end of turn here. Shark Chariot. There we go. Ephemerals <laughs> with Neverglade Collector, just like we drew it up. That's how that was our uh, combo kill that we drew up. So there was Ezreal Kindred. Um, it looked pretty cool. We got to do a lot of cool stuff in here with concurrent timelines. Um, you know, with got to do some spicy stuff there. Get that. Um, uh, get the Evershade Stalker making all those two drops. You know, like Green Glade Duo and things like that. Um, that was pretty cool. Uh, Kempunk Shredder with concurrent timelines is pretty awesome. Like the five drops you're getting are usually pretty good. We got a Jack the Winner. We got that. Um, uh, oh, what's the name of that card that we just had? Oh no, I just blanked on it. But we got the seven three with Challenger. We got um, Jack the Winner, and then also Never Glade a Collector. There we go. That was really cool. Never Glade Collector with the Evershade Stalker. That was something that, <laughs> that wasn't exactly how we built the deck, but uh, it still worked. Kindred was awesome. We got to um, use Kindred to be able to slay units a few times, and it was just really good. You know, and so, especially like with this kind of deck, like this with these two regions, you can play a lot of good small removal. There's tons of options for good cheap removal, but killing um, large things efficiently is difficult. And that's just kind of true for every single region, not necessarily just these. But it's difficult to kill large things efficiently. So what we can do here is use um, all of our things that kill small stuff efficiently, like Static Shock, Vile Feast, um, Chem Punk Shredder, Gotcha, Thermogenic Beam, Mystic Shock, like that kind of stuff. We use that and we slay small units on their side. And then we get to mark, um, you know, we can mark really large units with that. And so like we got to kill like the 6-4 with Spell Shield, that new card, that was awesome. Uh, they souped up. Um, an, another opponent 
souped up in, in a, a Celestial that was that usually that 4-1 with Overwhelm, and they turned it into like a 7-3 with Overwhelm. We were able to mark that. Um, we were able to mark some pretty big stuff with Kindred, and that was really cool. And then, of course, you just have the combo of Ledros and Concurrent Timelines that if you just you know get to pull it off, the game is over immediately. I could see Ruination honestly being kind of too slow for this kind of deck. Maybe you don't really need it. Um, we did cast it the first game, and it helped us win the first game. But um, I did like the cycle stuff that we had. I kind of wanted more, even more cycle stuff. But this was a difficult deck to build because there are so many good cards to play. And uh, this th this was the numbers that we ended up with. But there are just so many options um, in these regions. So this is a difficult one to build. But uh, it was good. It was a good deck. And um, yeah, I liked what it had. Uh, there we go. So that's Ezreal Kindred. So those y'all watching later on YouTube, hit that like button over there. And of course, feel free to leave those comments as well. I'd appreciate that. But thank you so much for watching and I will see you for the next video.